Cats and TV. Hey everybody, Cats and TV. Now everybody knows that three times four is three plus three plus three plus three. Similarly, three raised to the fourth power is three times three times three times three. But what happens if you want to raise three to the third power to the third power to the third power? There seems like there should be a similar pattern to the previous. But what is the name of the operation that uses four powers like that? It turns out it has a name. It's Tetration. And that is the topic of today's video. But first, please do subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly. And please do consider supporting us. We have links to Merch, Patreon, and Ko-Fi in the links below. The familiar arithmetic operations of addition and multiplication can be seen as a succession of operators that build upon one another, so-called hyperoperators. Addition is the first hyperoperator, adding one to a number in times. Multiplication is the second, as it is addition of a number in times. Exponentiation is the third, as it is multiplication of a number in times. And finally, tetration, which is exponentiation of a number in times, is the fourth hyperoperator. Indeed, the name tetration comes from the fact that it is the fourth such operator in the sequence. There is no absolutely standard notation for tetration, Though I like this one with two up arrows, that was defined by the mathematician and computer scientist Donald Knuth. We refer to the left-hand operand as a base, and the right hand as a height. Tetration is sometimes also referred to as a power tower, since we are stacking exponentials atop one another. When looking at a power tower like this, we start from the topmost and read downward and leftward to the bottom. If we wanted the tetration of 2 and 4, we would notate the power tower like this, and reduce it from the top to the bottom like this. Like exponentiation, we define the tetration of anything with a height of 0 to be 1. We can use this definition to easily write a function to compute tetration. In the programming language Haskell, we can define a double arrow operator like this that recursively applies exponentiation. Haskell is one of those cool languages that lets us define our own infix operators. We're also using a Unicode double arrow, A because it's cool, and B because Haskell already uses the double caret for another operator. We also have a version in Swift using the double caret as the operator. We'll make the source code for both versions available in the links below. Back in Haskell again, the tetration of 2 and 2, 2 and 3, and 2 and 4 can be computed easily. We can see that 3 tetration 2 is 27, and 3 tetration 3 is 3 raised to the 27th power, or this huge number. Indeed, tetration grows very fast, faster than even exponentials and factorials. This table shows just how fast it grows for the first few integers. We very quickly enter the realm of numbers that we can't display or even easily compute. Now just as with exponentiation, we can use any number as the left-hand operand of tetration. We can, for example, say pi tetration 3, which is pi to the pi to the pi, and we can easily compute it with our tetration function. Of course, with exponentiation, we can also use non-integers on the right side. 2 to the 1 half is the square root of 2. e raised to the pi is this number. But with tetration, the second operand can only be integers. There is no agreed-upon value for, say, the tetration of 2 with a height of 3 halves. But one can extend tetrations to work with infinite heights, a base A and an infinite height. For numbers like 2, this power tower is clearly going to go to infinity. But for some numbers, the infinite power tower converges. Take the square root of 2. As the height of its power tower approaches infinity, it converges to 2. We can verify this using our program and ever larger right-hand operands. You can see that the values are getting closer and closer to 2. This is a somewhat remarkable result. In fact, the famous mathematician Leonard Euler showed that the infinite power tower or tetration with infinity converges when the base is between e to the minus e and e to the 1 over e. Outside of that range, you're pretty much out of luck. We can also perform tetration with complex number bases. Take the imaginary constant i. As shown in a previous video on exponentials, we can define powers of i using Euler's formula. It's funny how he keeps coming back into our discussions. Based on this formula, we can derive the following formula for i raised to any complex number. Using this relation in our Haskell program, 
we get the following approximate values for the first 20 or so tetrations of I. If we plot these values on the complex plane, we see that they are spiraling inwards towards a fixed point, approximated by this complex number. So like the square root of 2, the infinite tetration or power tower of I converges to a constant. Just as with real numbers, we see a range of complex numbers like I, where the infinite tetration converges to a fixed point. But for some others, it converges to a repeating cycle. One such case is 2I, or 2 times the imaginary constant. If we compute its tetrations up to 1000, we see that it settles into a cycle of three numbers. We saw this kind of behavior when we looked at the logistic function in a previous video. We'll put a link to that up here. Just like in that case, we can plot the behavior of infinite titrations on the complex plane. We can write a program to accomplish this, this time using the language Swift. When we run our program and look at the output plot over a small range of the complex plane, we see a fractal-like structure emerge. The red area represents values that converge to a single fixed point, blue represents cycles of 2, green cycles of 3, and so on and so forth. Let's zoom in and look at some of the details in this plot. Complex tetrations is not unlike the Mandelbrot set, which represents quadratic maps, or the plot of the logistic map that we previously explored. Indeed, this is something we see often when working with complex numbers. Do you have any questions or thoughts about tetration or anything else in this video? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.